I was recently asked how I achieved the colors I use on my woodworking uh, pieces here. And I said I wanted to wait until after I did a demonstration on the coloring. And now that demo is over and here I am. The colors I'm using are transtint dyes. However, I am mixing them with shellac. Not water, not alcohol. Uh, here's the reason why. Well, I know a lot of wood turners and artists use the chestnut brand color stains and also the artisan color dyes available from Craft Supply. If you look at my chart here, uh, the chestnut stains cost $12.95 for 8.4 ounces or otherwise $1.54 per ounce of use. And that's straight out of the bottle. They're not diluted. Uh, the Artisan dies, $7.95 for 8 ounces. That's $0.99 cents per die. However, Transcent dies are $21.99 for a 2-ounce bottle. So that's $10.99 per ounce, but that's in concentration, not diluted. When you dilute it as per the bottle's directions, it comes out to roughly about $0.34 cents per ounce. Uh, big savings comparative to the chestnut and artisan. Now diluting it per the bottle's instructions, that makes 64 ounces when mixed with denatured alcohol. The denatured alcohol is uh, $7.99 and the transient is $21.99 for a total of $29.98 for 64 ounces or $0.46 you know, dollars per ounce or $0.46 cents an ounce. However, as I said, I mix mine with shellac, and I mix my own shellac. I use a super bond de-waxed shellac flakes, uh, roughly around $39 to $40 per pound. A gallon of DNA, uh, denatured alcohol, is $15.98 at the local hardware store. That gives me a total of $55.88, or when it's done at a one pound cut, that's 43 cents per ounce. So then, since I'm using a 0.8 pound cut for the spraying, since I'm using it through an airbrush, it comes out to about 0.37 uh, per ounce, or 37 cents an ounce. Uh, add that in with the uh, dye, and the total cost per ounce for me is 71 cents. So I'd rather pay 71 cents versus $1.54 or even 99 cents. And again, the top two, the chestnut and arson, that's straight as is. That's not with shellac. So basically it's going on like a alcohol or a water base and it can run. Now, if you spray it through an airbrush, yeah, it's going to go on. It's going to dry almost instantly, but it can blend and it can run through and it can uh, bleed through the turning if it's turning thin. But when you mix it with the shellac, now it's going on as a finish and it actually sits on top and it has less chance to bleed. Uh, some people would want to use Zinsser. However, Zinsser slack is $43.98 per gallon, uh, coming out to about 34 cents per gallon, or I mean 34 cents per ounce, uh, with the dye be 68 cents per ounce. That's straight as is out of the can. However, I don't know what pound cut exactly Zinsser is mixed at. It could be a one pound cut, it could be a one and a half to two pound cut. I'm not sure. So you'd have to see if it's a two pound cut, it's going to be a better value. You just have to get some denatured alcohol and blend. So in this piece here, you want to know the colors used. As far as the transcent dyes, I used the red, the yellow, the blue, and the black. And it's my advice unless you want to spend a lot more money and unless you want to really branch out that those are the only four colors you really need because black can be diluted to be used as a tint for darkening in uh, you could use it as a straight black if you want and then beyond that with the red blue and yellow the yellow and red makes orange the yellow and blue makes green and Depending on what concentration you use of each, you can achieve just about any other color in between. And for like a purple, the red and blue. So the three primary colors of red, blue, yellow are all you really need here. 
Um, unless you want to get something into a specialized color, then that's fine. But really save yourself the money and, you know, buy the three primaries on the black and you're good to go. Now on this piece here, I used underneath the transient, I used some spray paint. Gold. Silver. In black, those are I previously sprayed the piece with those three colors, kind of grading them through, let that dry, and then for my demonstration, I sprayed on the colors. So, on this piece, I first started out with yellow over the uh, silver, and this is my yellow clear coat here. It looks almost like shellac, but it is actually darken in with the yellow and you can kind of look at through the glass and you get a better idea of what's going to be when you you know actually spray it thin on something you want to mix it with greater concentration than what you think it looks like in the bottle here's the red again it looks very dark on its own but when you kind of run up the side of the bottle you get a better idea of the color And the blue, it almost looks black there until you kind of swirl it. And that gives it a better idea of what's going to look like sprayed. In my black, I actually do about half the strength. Because I want more of a uh, gray shadowing effect. But still looks fairly dark there. But you can see kind of up here what's actually going to look like. Okay, this is take two. I switched my work pieces here and I have the work piece which I previously sprayed with the gold paint. In this case it was a Rust-Oleum metallic but any metallic paint you have as long as it sets up and is dry should do. Uh, if you want to go bare or over you know bare wood or over uh, other colored paint it's fine but for me I'm doing the uh, gold metallic here. Uh, I was trying to explain how to set up and avoid spills and what I do, I had a spill. So get out your, you know, latex or uh, nitro gloves. You may look like you're going to be doing a proctol, but, you know, it saves a lot of cleanup. Otherwise, you're going to be looking like you came out of a triage unit, you know, after a warfare. So, you know, with, when you're doing the red. So, you know, use your gloves. Uh, <clears throat> I use isopropyl alcohol as my solvent when I'm doing the airbrushing. Not when I mix the shellac, but when I'm just doing the airbrushing here. Uh, because it's cheap, effective, and it works great for cleanup. I can buy it at the big box lot stores like Sam's or BJ's or Costco for about $4 for uh, two 32 ounce bottles. So a half a gallon for $4 or $8 a gallon. Denatured alcohol is around sixteen dollars, you know, a gallon. So it's a big savings. So you know, so isopropyl alcohol is what I'm using here, just as a cleanup solvent, not as you know for everything else. I also use uh, little pipettes for dispensing the dyes. These work great for drawing up and filling up my little bottles for spraying or my little uh, cup. Most of the time I'll be using, or at least for this, I'm gonna be using a clear bottle so I avoid the spill that I had previously trying to watch the camera and do the work and the airbrush. I previously tried to use this, which I tipped out of when I was at too high an angle. So these are great for small jobs, but you gotta watch it, you don't spill. Okay, so first things, I'm going to use the pipette. Draw up some of the clear colored finish. And put it into my bottle. Just 
probably more than enough, but I just want to make sure. And before I go too far, I'm going to clear my pipette so it's reusable, so it doesn't dry on the inside. And again here, I'm using the isopropyl alcohol. So it's into my bottle. I'm using an a inexpensive Harbor Freight airbrush. It looks like a Badger, but this is a Harbor Freight. And you can see the dye from my little mishap previously on the airbrush. Now, this airbrush costs about $10 at Harbor Freight, give or take. You can use the 20% coupon and save yourself some money so you get it for around $8. Or you can spend $50 and buy a badger that looks exactly like it. Now, the badger, there is a little more refinement. It, you know, has better uh, materials. And it has a finer spray. But for doing the woodworking here, this works fine. If you're going to be doing fine detail work, then sure, spend the extra money. Get a, you know, go even further than just a regular single action badger. Go get a dual action or even a better airbrush and a badger uh, but you're going to be talking two three hundred dollars at that point and they are going to be a little more uh, intricate in use so if you haven't used one before if you've never used airbrush I really recommend just spend ten dollars on this little Harbor Freight it's easy and simple and quick and if you don't like it you're not out a lot of much out of pocket so all I have to do is I've put my bottle into the unit that's going to keep me from spilling it all over like the other. Make sure you keep it in there. Okay, I have turned on my little uh, pump for the airbrush. It's fairly quiet, but you will hear it running in the background. It's a lot less noisy than a regular air compressor. Uh, if you don't have one of the little ones for airbrushes, you can use regular air compressor. You just need to get the right, you know, fittings and make sure you adjust the pressure down. This is only uses a small amount of pressure. Now let me make sure everything's flowing right. It's nice, even, light coats. And this dries almost instantly. Okay, I switched up just a little bit. I'm going to apply just a little yellow near the rim. Then I'm going to deepen everything in with just a little black. And that's all I'm going to apply of the yellow. And now we're going to apply just a little black on the inside.
go a little more. And that'll be good for now. Okay, all my spraying and cleanup is done. All I need to do now is let this dry and then I'm going to give it a clear.